Hey, John and Mike from BrewDashJuice.com. Tonight we're tasting one of my beers. Hey, one your of my beers. beers. Excellent. One of my classics, but I keep screwing with the classics. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> Mike Warren. Screwing with the classics. Screwing with the classics. It's kind of like uh, Turner Classic Movies or mm -hmm. something like that. You're screwing with them. You're colorizing the black and white film. Yes. Great. So tonight we're sampling a cream ale. Classic <sighs> American cream ale. Yes. Well, maybe it's not that classic. Cause I no, because you it. keep screwing with it. Because, like I said, before the camera started to roll, I don't know if I can pick out these hops you use, Mr. Mike. This is uh, hmm, different. So tell me, okay, so I already sneak, uh, I, I snuck a peek. Mm -mm. Uh, flaked barley is one of the things Boom. you've uh, added to this particular grain bill. So I can't remember the brewery, but there was an interview on the Brewing Network that they were doing with somebody, and one of the things that they made a cream ale, and one of the things that they did is they didn't bother putting corn in it. They didn't want to use flaked corn. They actually just used flaked barley okay. to achieve a certain mouthfeel and just sort of lighten the body of the beer by using flaked barley, and I thought... Well, I like flake barley. I'm going to try that, too. <laughs> so I, you know, just looking for inspiration, reasons yep. to brew. And uh, this is one of the beers along the list of sort of re recalibrating my equipment. Yep. So I thought, oh, that's right. Let me do this. Mash problem. Keep it simple. Yeah. And uh, see what I get and see what flake barley is like with a bunch of pills. And I'm like, well, this is uh, just American two-row. Yep. Um, call it a cream ale and then uh, and ferment it. Okay. So, but I went back to my normal hopping routine for my cream ale, which is just all Liberty hops, with some at 60 minutes, one ounce at 60, one ounce at 15, and one ounce at 5. So Liberty hops, uh, see, I, I was able to pick it out the last few ones. This Not is strong. Really? I think there's a very strong bittering um, component to this. Yeah, the bittering component is there. <laughs> so how many, how many ounces at 60 minutes? Just one? Or? One ounce, keeping it simple. Right, and then you said at 30? Fifteen. At fifteen. I'm in a five. And then five. So yeah. I mean I don't find that Liberty has got a no. strong aroma. It's just really sort of a an Americanized offshoot of some noble hops. That's right. That's right. And so it's got a little bit of a noble hop aroma quality to it. Yeah. Um, but it's really not supposed to stand out either in malt or in hop, just balanced and drinkable. Mm. It still needs uh, it's still it's got a ways to go to clear up a little bit. It's only been in a keg for um, about five or seven days, and I just got it carbonated. So that first few pours with the fresh carbonation, I usually bleed off a little CO2, so I carbonate at kind of a higher level. I think that lifts up some stuff off the bottom. So, what do you think about the body of this? It seems like you know it's it's me it's it's uh, a little more present than your typical cream ale. Yeah, and I think that's the flake barley. Twisting with the... Uh, I think there's a, a bit of a smoothness to yeah, it. Yeah, 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 it's there. That I think I'm kind of digging. Yep. Um, I, I, I'm sort of enjoying that, and I'm, I'm wondering if... Uh, so, it's it's 90% raw two-row okay. and 10% flake barley. Okay, So Great. if you if you really want to know at home, that's nine pounds and one pound. <laughs> um <laughs> Good so, for you. Uh, people ask. Quick math. Pick, people people quick ask. Math. The starting gravity on this was 1053, and it yeah. finished at uh, 1009. Wow. So, mash problems solved. Good for you. Um, but. Oh, good for you. And I fermented with USO5, um, just using dry yeast. I've been really, the last uh, four or five beers I've brewed have just been dry yeah, yeast because I'm just trying to simplify yep. a little bit. But um, I think this is highly drinkable. Yeah. Um, might revisit this. I don't know if. Um, it might be interesting to try to soften it a little bit with either some sugar or with a corn addition. Or maybe back off a little bit in the flaked barley, but I do sort of like the uh, flaked barley I just thing. wonder if uh, if you put this in the competition. Is it too much for you? I think that it, it's uh, it's a little heavier than I than I expected. We'll call this a winter cream. <laughs> there you go. And you just you need a little bit more uh, specialty beer, man. Right. Yeah, yeah, winter cream ale. And people are like, oh, well, I can totally see why. You should probably, you know, what you do is uh, also uh, up the the, uh, the the two row too. We get the uh, alcohol content a little higher. Get into the five, like, like an eight high percent five. cream ale. I don't know about that high. I was thinking more five six, um, and then bring the barley to to give that slick, uh, you know, uh, full yeah. body uh, presence, and you got something there, man. Look at that. Look at that. It'd be interesting to just do exactly this recipe, but now add in another pound of. Uh, Roasted barley, 
and you'd have a dry stout. Really? Yeah. And it's sort of like yeah. an American dry stout. There you go. Yeah. Um, I could see that. It change that dynamic a little bit. Huh. There's something about the the Liberty Hops, though, man. I, it's not. There's the the bittering is is present. It just doesn't have the. I've had your cream st uh, ales before, and there's been more of a floral um, yeah. presentation to it, and it's yep. just not here. I think one. that some of it is, this is something that I'm slowly mm. thinking about and trying to research a little bit occasionally, but I think it's sort of the luck of the draw with the Liberty Hops that you get at the time, Got it. and I don't know what specifically harvest these were, you know, I mean, yeah. and uh, these guys are about 4%. Uh, alpha acid, so that's sort of on the low side. Um, I sort of buy the hops, and then I just buy, I, as I think many home brewers do, you go to the store and you go, oh, hey, I need I four ounces of this thing, yeah. you buy four ounces, but you need to actually look at the alpha acid and go, oh, my recipe was actually looking for 5%. Right. I need to maybe I should grab an extra one and then yeah. over, you know, do the math and figure out, maybe I needed one and a quarter ounce to bitter to get where I want it to be. Got it. Yeah. Um, but in a beer like this, you know, if it comes in under, I'm not totally concerned with it because it's not supposed to be hop forward beer. Yeah. Um, I've heard of some people finishing their American cream ales with like an ounce of Cascade just to put that yeah. American hop yeah. aroma in it, yeah, yeah. but not in a strong way. Yeah. But I think you're right. In the past, all liberty, all the time for this has worked well for me. And I think you should stick with it. That's that is like your signature move. It don't is my, my move. Don't screw with that move. move. I know. I got to stop screwing it's with an the, old veteran with move. it all together. Nice. Um, all right, cream ale, dude. Sweet. Flip so barley. so so the big things for you are like, I got to figure out the mash thing. I got to make sure I get my gravity, yeah. you know, and yeah. push it through, and make sure I make a wort that's highly fermentable, yep. and you got it going. Yeah. So what I do now is actually sit on top of the mash tun, my feet in the mash tun, oh. stirring it the whole time. Don't say that. People will believe. <laughs> People will believe that. And I was like, okay, so exactly how long do you... Well, you got to start with your left foot, <laughs> and you got to keep going. All right. Well, I'm glad you get over that hump, because I know that was an issue of many uh, episodes before. Um, the, big, the big success will be yeah. if the beer over there... Like that beer? If that beer that's over there, the new beer... If that beer makes it through uh -huh. with a good final gravity, and I sort of already know it's going to, we can talk about that another time. <laughs> Spoiler alert, right. Spoiler alert, that's right. right. Um, that beer makes it through with a good mash profile, meaning a good finishing gravity. Yeah. Then I'll really feel like I've you got it. retreated my system nice. back, in, back in the money. Then I'll retire. Very cool. So, cream ale with flake barley. Flake barley. Give it a try. Totally non-traditional, but, but still. it's tasty. Yeah, and like think of other light styles that you could throw in some uh, flake barley just to get that slick uh, and, and uh, wonderful mouthfeel that you got going on with this particular uh, ingredient add. Mm. Um, like of a blonde ale, like yeah. an imperial blonde ale. You know, whenever I put like flaked barley or even yeah. flaked oats, let's say, in stouts that have got a complicated malt bill on top of it, yep. I, I think sometimes it's hard to say what's the real effect of that. That beer. I mean, in, in essence, this is sort of like a smash beer with one extra ingredient. And we're yeah. sort of highlighting flaked barley yeah. inside a smash beer. There you go. Right? How about that? Yeah. This is sort of like a, Drew Beecham gave us a lecture about brewing on the ones, where he said, one, instead of doing smash, one base malt, one specialty malt, one hop, yeah. one yeast, right? Just so yeah. still, you get the opportunity to add something extra in Just there. Just to see what that, how yeah. that plays with the yeah. other ones. Absolutely sweet. Cool. Actually, that's that's a good idea. Let's keep that. Let's uh, put that to the side. We're gonna have like some dash, dash, D double malt. I don't know. <laughs> Brew dash do is that? <laughs> there you go. Dash. Don't forget the dash. Don't forget the dash. All right. Thanks for watching. We appreciate your time and efforts. Uh, for John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. Brew on. Cheers. <laughs>